absolutely a big deal. It allows her to continue to be a keyboard warrior behind the scenes and bash my client without having any accountability, without having to look the man whose life she's ruining in the face. All right, it's 1014. Let me call the case of Shannon Ruth versus Nicholas Carter. Let's take appearances starting first with the plaintiff. Good morning, Your Honor. Mark Boscovich on behalf of Ms. Ruth. Thank you. Good morning, Your Honor. Jamie McAnally on behalf of plaintiff Ms. Ruth as well. Thank you. Good morning, Your Honor. Dale Hayes on behalf of Nicholas Carter. Thank you. And are there any other appearances for the record? Your Honor, I believe my partner, Ms. Wakiyama, may be on. I'm not sure because she's coming for a depot. No, it looks like just me. Sorry. Okay. Any other appearances for the record? None from plaintiff. None for the defense, Your Honor. Thank you both. This is the uh, plaintiff's motion for a protective order. Plaintiff? Yes, Your Honor. Um, I don't want to rehash everything in our protective order, um, but there's one point I think in the opposition that's worth noting. And none of the cases cited by Mr. Carter, is there any discussion of limiting a, uh, a, plaintiff, a party's right to attend virtually? So here, we're not seeking to exclude Mr. Carter's attendance. We believe he has a right to be there, but in a virtual setting where he could see and observe everything in the proceedings virtually. I think it's kind of ironic that we're all here today virtually. We we're able to conduct important court hearings virtually. We we're able to conduct depositions virtually. And I know for a fact that there are even some courts in California that conduct full trials virtually. So I don't see how Mr. Carter is prejudiced in any way by attending and observing this deposition virtually. Um, it makes me question what is the motivation? Why does Mr. Carter need to be physically present in that room versus just observing the proceedings virtually? Well, one thing I can note is that in the course of this case so far, we've produced a lot of therapy records from my client. And in those therapy records, they indicate that my client suffers from PTSD as a result of this rape and that she is triggered by certain things that remind her of the rape. Of course, anything associated with Mr. Carter. And so my concern is that this is being done for intimidation, to, to harass, to embarrass this plaintiff, when all she wants to do is provide her truthful, full and accurate testimony. That's what we all want in this process. And I'm concerned by having him physically present there that it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a detriment to everyone, not just to us, but to the defense as well. If there's any particular issues the court would like me to address, I'd be happy to do so. But on that, uh, I'll let the defense address the points. Thank you. Opposition, please. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, Your Honor, Mr. Boscovich's argument essentially turns hundreds of years of, of, of due process and cases, you know, um, expounding on the rights of litigants to sit in depositions and confront their accusers on its head to suggest that he wouldn't be prejudiced by simply placing him in another room where he can see her and she can't see him, again, turns the governing case law on its head. Even our administrative code, which is, is a subcategory of civil proceedings, gives the parties the right to confront their accusers. You know, I mean, this is a quote from the Supreme Court in Coy v. Iowa. It is always more difficult to tell a lie about a person to his face than behind his back. That face-to-face -face presence may, unfortunately, upset the truthful rape victim or abused child, but by the same token, it may confound and undo the false accuser or reveal the child coached by a malevolent adult. Now, Your Honor, he doesn't want to be there to intimidate her. If he wanted to intimidate her, she's been bashing him online for six years, Judge. He could have done a lot of things to intimidate her, and he's done none. I know there have been allegations of them of internet bullying, but, but there's, they, they proved nothing, Your Honor. And just like their anti-slap hearing, Your Honor, there's no evidence that he, counsel just talked about uh, medical records, Judge, missing from his 
comment to you, Your Honor, was the fact that there, of all the medical records they disclosed, not a single record predated the, the fall of 2020, as you know, Your Honor, which is our position when the Schumanns got their claws in her. You know, when she's, poli when she's reporting this alleged event to police in, in, in November of 2019 and December of 2019, she's specifically telling them, Nick Carter did not rape me. He didn't rape me. And then she's also admitting that to, to, to friends she's confiding in overseas and also to the, the, the Schumanns themselves, Your Honor. But yet the medical records don't start with her being sexually assaulted until she spends four, five, six months with the Schumanns. And all of a sudden, hey, he didn't just call me you know, names. He didn't just grab my arm. He performed this protracted rape on me in two rooms of a bus. Uh, uh, Judge, my client has the absolute right to attend this deposition. That's why the standard is so heavy. So, I mean, the standard itself refutes Mr. Boscovich's argument that there's no prejudice to my client, you know, by ordering him that he, that he not attend. You know, Your Honor, the good cause to preclude a party, you know, must be more than garden variety boilerplate evidence. You know, good, regular good cause boilerplate evidence. It, it has to, there must be a particularized and specific showing of harm or danger. The cases talk about the fact that it should, these orders should only be entered in rare cases involving the most extraordinary circumstances and general considerations. And that's exactly what's in front of you, Your Honor. Now, his, our, his statement that there's medical records indicating she suffers from post PTSD, now is the time for him to produce those. We specifically argued in our opposition that we were able to produce 24 hours after their motion that there was no, no expert opinions produced, no, no medical records, no diagnoses, Your Honor. And yet, no reply filed with all these medical records he says he has. And the reason why they didn't do it, Your Honor, is, is, is these, the medical records that do exist fall squarely within our conspiracy. This person, this alleged rape didn't occur to this woman until the Schumanns got their claws in her and groomed her for four or five months. Uh, you know, Judge, she's uh, woefully failed to satisfy this burden of establishing a particularized and specific showing. In fact, you don't even have her affidavit in front of you, Your Honor, saying this triggers me, that triggers me. No medical evidence, and, and, and for a moment, let, let, let's look past the medical evidence. You don't even have non-medical evidence in front of you, Your Honor. What I mean by that is no declaration from her, no declaration from a friend that says that when a Backstreet Boys song comes on, which they do all the time, she starts crying or she you know, curls into a ball or, or anything of the nature. The, the opposite is true, Judge. I mean, she's all over the Internet bashing him any day and every day she can. She's participating in, 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 in podcasts on the Internet that are, that, are, that are disseminated to the world. She's participating in staged news conferences since the filing of this lawsuit, Your Honor. And not only that, Your Honor, she, she participated in a German broadcast which marketed itself as a documentary. And she's currently, currently, while this case was pending, being interviewed by Ish Entertainment to participate in their uh, uh, broadcast concerning these alleged allegations. So for a woman that's coming before you that says, hey, I'm triggered, hey, I can't handle Nick Carter, just the mere thought of him, coming up, triggers me and sends me into this traumatic experience she didn't describe to you. It, it, it just, it, it's belied by, by, by the facts, Judge. Just like everything else she's said and done in this case, Your Honor, and further to that point, the cases she cites to, the ABM case specifically, there was a prior finding in that case, Judge, you know, that the court made. As Your Honor knows, you know, the, the finding, and I'll quote it, Judge, it's important. It's, quote, objectively reasonable, of the fear of serious physical harm, end quote, that these plaintiffs have. And another fact that she leaves out from her, from her motion is, is the fact that these plaintiffs had already filed a motion and were approved to proceed anonymously. Now, Your Honor knows that is, that, 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 that's, that's quite a, an award in and of itself. So these are anonymous plaintiffs saying, this, 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 by the way, the defendant from the case was a convicted rapist, unlike Mr. Carter, who not only wasn't convicted, he has no sexual assault record whatsoever. In fact, he was investigated specifically emanating from Miss Roos complaints by the Tacoma police, a protracted investigation, Your Honor, 12 months long. At the conclusion of it, they said, Miss Roos, we're not going to charge him. So forget about prosecu prosecution or conviction. We're not going to charge him because of the contradictions and inconsistencies in your reports. So that's, a, that's the opposite of the facts we have from ABM, Your Honor, the complete opposite. In fact, the only prior finding we have in this case, Judge, is your finding that her statements that Nick Carter raped her were not truthful, were not made in good faith, or were not made with, without knowledge of their falsity. You know, Judge, which this case could not be, and this is clearly, counsel just argued that Carter must be trying to intimidate her. Your Honor, for six years, this man has endured this. He's, his family's endured death threats. His kids get picked on at school. 
Uh, he, he finally has the chance to have this woman look him in the eye and spin her tail. And that's exactly what it is, Judge. And I mean that with all due respect. But just like she can come to court, Your Honor, and argue that this guy falsely accused this guy of raping her when she was a, a, had diminished mental capacity, which, by the way, no, no, no medical records for that, Your Honor. No, no autopsy, or excuse me, not, not autopsy, no uh, the condition she has, cerebral palsy or autism. You have no medical records in front of you establishing that, establishing those conditions she supposedly had back in 2001. He has the right to go in there and look her in the eye while she spins his tail. And, and that's, that, that's what this, this case law we cited to talks about, and that's why this burden is so heavy they face. So, I mean, for him to come in and say, hey, yeah, just, just put him on a video. It's no big deal. It's, it's absolutely a big deal. It allows her to continue to be a keyboard warrior behind the scenes and bash my client without having any accountability, without having to look the man whose life she's ruining in the face, who she's cost millions and millions of dollars, Judge, in the face. You know, I, I don't mean to belabor the point, Your Honor, um, but just moving on, um, it, it, the evidentiary record, in addition to, to her, her four admissions that Nick didn't sexually assault her, is riddled with sworn statements, none on her end, by the way, Judge. Four statements, five witnesses, uh, excuse me, 12 sworn statements, five of which from precipient witnesses that all testified. All these people were in Tacoma in 2001, Your Honor. They were all at the Tacoma Dome or at the hotel afterwards. All testified her story is factually impossible. The buses were barricaded. There was no autograph line. The fans had no access. Nick was rushed out of the dome by security onto the bus, and they immediately left which makes sense, right, Judge? They're, they're probably the most popular band in 2001. <clears throat> what do you want to do with a band in a swarming ocean of fans? You want to get them out of there to avoid liability, to avoid incident. And that's exactly what their policy was back then. Judge, I, I read you the Koi quote, you know, which I want, I want to echo in my argument. I'm not going to read it again here. But, Your Honor, it, this is just to grant this motion based on this record would set a precedent where any litigant could come into court and have their attorney not them, their attorney, argue all these conditions in this traumatic situation with no evidence. In fact, a mountain of evidence, you know, swallowing those arguments. And that party could be precluded from one of the fundamental rights of litigation, particularly as a defendant, to be able to look his accuser in the eye and say, tell me that I did these things when, you, when we both know I've never even met you. Um, so thank you, Your Honor. Unless you want to hear anything else from me, let me, one more moment, Judge. I just want to look at, see if I want to address any of the arguments specifically made. By counsel, like I think I've covered my points, Your Honor. I thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Boskers, I assume the reason there's no reply is because the motion was only filed on on uh, December fifth. But your reply, please. Yes, Your Honor. Um, to address one of the points that Miss Ruth has been making all these public statements about Mr. Carter. Ms. Ruth has bravely decided to be named in this lawsuit, not be anonymous, and speak about her story. Um, but in every setting where she's talked about her story, Mr. Carter's not in the room with her. Mr. Carter's not within 10 feet of her when she's discussing these things. She's speaking her truth because she feels it's important to empower all of those other people out there who have been victimized by Mr. Carter as, as she, you know, she felt empowered when she learned about Ms. Schumann's story. Um, and then the, the other point I want to mention is uh, we could have provided medical records to this effect. These have been produced to the other side. But my, one of my concerns is a lot of these things have been leaked to the media. But I would be happy to lodge with the court what has already been produced to defense counsel. And there's you know, therapy records from three different uh, treaters who have all diagnosed her with PTSD as a result of this rape, and he even discussed triggers. I didn't want to put that in the record because I know a lot of this stuff is getting blasted on the internet. So I tried my best to protect my client in that situation. And that's what I'm trying to do here. I do think in the end, Mr. Carter being physically present within a few feet of Miss Ruth is not gonna serve anybody. It's not gonna help anybody here. Uh, Mr. Carter has, you know, he'll be able to observe everything just like we are observing everything, everything today virtually. He'll be able to do the same uh, tomorrow and the next day. And I appreciate you uh, considering this matter. Thank you. Thank you. This is Your Honor, the if I may, we... Mr. Hayes? If I can address just his reply argument since no reply was filed, Your Honor. You may, and he'll get the last word. It's okay. his motion. Thank you, Your Honor. Your Honor, the notion that in her prior public statements, Mr. Carter wasn't in the room is irrelevant. Their motion argues that the very thought of him causes her to trigger. 
That's why we made those arguments. She's not going around not thinking of him. She spends every day thinking of him and continues to publicly bash him. The next issue, Your Honor, I mean, the, the fact that we have the medical records and he's making legal arguments about them but with, with not presenting with you with any evidence, that that's swallowed by the standard here. The standard says a, a, a specific and particularized showing, Your Honor. They, they've known about this depot since October 19th, and they've known about their client's supposed special circumstances since then because Mr. Boscovich immediately asked that the devil be divided into two days. And we said, no problem. You know, but to say that now on an OST, he didn't have time to present medical records. He could have presented them to you in camera. You know, there's a lot of things he could have done. We, we produced a 20 page opposition in 24 hours. He's had a week. He's had two weeks since we told him we weren't going to agree, Your Honor. And, 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 and judge these, you know, the records don't say, don't show what he just stated. The records show her reporting her symptoms and the, and the therapist commenting, well, that sounds like this. And then her asking her lawyers, hey, can you, her asking her therapist, can you give me a, lawyer, a letter from my lawyer that says this? And no letters have been produced. So, you know, if he's going to argue about them, I'm going to argue in response after having reviewed them. And once again, Judge, they don't even start until uh, the fall of 2020. Um, Your Honor, and, 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 and he, he, counsel still hasn't made any argument or produced any evidence that would tend to suggest that Miss Ruth would be incapable of telling the truth because Mr. Carr is in the room. Again, he has a fundamental right to be there. That's why the standard is so high. That's why Coy v. Iowa made the statement it made about the value and the significance of being able to look your accuser in the eye and sit across the table from them in the deposition. And, and, and I'll submit on that, Judge. All right, Mr. Boscovich, it was your motion. You get the last word. Yes, Your Honor. I'm going to just read directly from one of Mrs. Ruth's therapy notes. This is something that's been produced to defense counsel. It's been produced as Plaintiff 359. It's a therapy note dated October 8, 2020, and it's from Deanna Kirkendall, her therapist at the time. It states, quote, client meets the DSMV criterion for PTSD as evidenced by being raped, having flashbacks about the event, having nightmares about the event, experiencing distress when reminded of the event by music by the Backstreet Boys, avoidance of stimuli associated with the event, inability to remember details of the event, persistent negative and distressful beliefs about self and others, distorted cognitions about the cause of the event, persistent inability to experience positive emotions, self-destructive behavior after the event, significant distress and social functioning, Duration of the symptoms being more than one month, symptoms not being related to substance abuse, client used to cut herself. End quote. Again, again you're on the bottom. Mr. Hayes, no interruptions. Sorry, Judge. Yeah, Your Honor, yeah. In the end, when we talk about the fact that certain uh, events, uh, um, circumstances of the concert trigger Miss Ruth, uh, such as, you know, certain colors or certain items, the fact that something like that is going to trigger someone, obviously the person being in the room within a few feet of you is going to be very triggering. And again, I, I don't know how this serves anyone for him being there. It's not going to, it's not going to be productive having him in that room. Um, and on that, I rest. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Hayes, you had interrupted. Was there something essential that you needed to say? I do apologize, Your Honor, for interrupting, and, and as you, you as well, Mr. Boscovich. I, that's not evidence, Judge. Again, he's had two months to give you this report, this evidence, and then we could have responded to it and showed you why mm -hmm. that record and the other record combined is, is just nonsense. It's like it's smokescreen like the rest of her case. She, she right. waited until the fall of 2020 to suddenly you know, manufacture this evidence, and there's lots of comments in these medical records that would tend to contradict or inconsistent that, that just demonstrate She's just self-reporting, and her doctors are regurgitating what she's reporting to them, Judge. Right. And I'll, I'll rest on that. And again, I, it's unfair that we're asked to do this, given the time they've had to. They, he could have articulated an argument, and, and you, him and I wouldn't be sitting here arguing in front of you, speculating about a document that's not in front of you. He had, he had two months to do this. All right. Your comments are kind of repetitive, Mr. Hayes. That will be the last words you will say this morning with regard to this motion. Mr. Boscovich, anything further? Uh, just one. Just want to apologize, Your Honor, that we had to do this on short notice. I've been doing this work for approximately ten years, and in my career, I, I've never had an experience where the perpetrator insisted on being present at the deposition. We've usually been able to resolve this informally. 
And so it didn't come in, into my mind till kind of late into the game. And I apologize for that, Your Honor. Good enough. This is plaintiff's motion for a protective order. Question will be denied for the following reasons. One, when a plaintiff chooses to initiate a complaint, they have to assume that they're going to be submitted to examination. The defendant here has the right of confrontation. And most importantly to me, the in the event that the plaintiff is not available for trial, this deposition would constitute her trial testimony. So if the prejudice of any here weighs to the defendant, not to the plaintiff, I understand the concerns that the plaintiff has, and they may be able to be alleviated by other means, such as uh, some kind of stipulation, which I expect and direct the parties to discuss with regard to length, uh, it, the need for uh, necessary breaks, even protracted breaks. Um, so if the parties are unable to resolve those issues, I'm available for a telephonic conference. But it, it's not fair to the defendant to require him to attend virtually. And uh, for those reasons, the motion is denied. So the uh, Mr. Hayes and team to prepare the order, Mr. Boscovich and team to review and approve the form of an order. And again, if you need the court's intervention with regard to some type of protocol to protect the conduct of the deposition, the court remains available to you for that, including during the deposition if you have issues that you can, if when you both agree, you can ask to do a telephonic and I will be available. Thank you, Your Honor. Yeah, thank you, Your Honor, for making yourself available for that. Thank you. All right. Anything else today? No, no Your Honor. Thank you, Bob. <clears throat> thank you, Bob.